Welcome back to Rising World Building Tutorial. This is number two, and today we're going to talk about uh, the keyboard commands and what they do and how you use them when you're constructing something. So last time we talked about blocks and how the blocks worked and the grid and how the grid works. Um, we can talk more about the grid because it is a little more complex than what I first showed you. Um, so if you if you remember, I made this big uh, this big sheet here to make this floor. I think I'm going to add I'm going to add another section really quickly. So I think our house is going to be bigger than this. Okay, so that's our little house, and now I want this block to be a regular size block. Well, to do that, I'm going to hit Shift and Backspace, and that brings it back to a regular cube. So now we've got our cube. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And yeah, maybe one more row. Okay, so we've got the basics of our of our little house started. Now let's uh, let's talk about this whole snapping thing and this grid. This is the thing I think that confuses people the, the most, and uh, it is hard to explain and hard to demonstrate. But I'm going to do my best. So what you see here is you see a block that is snapping to each other block on a grid. If I hold down the C key, I get this radial menu. And I'm going to explain what each of these things does. But let's start with this one. This is the pivot mode. They call it the pivot mode and it's on automatic right now. And that means depending on where you're placing your block, it's going to snap to the next full block on a side, but there's no way to force it using the grid as it is right now. There's no way to force it to something else, right? So if I make the grid smaller, let's go down one size by hitting the minus key on the keypad. That will bring us to the next size down, and it still won't let us do anything but snap to those four blocks that we're pointing at. So in, instead of using automatic, I'm going to go back to the C key, hold that down, and then hover over this A under pivot mode. And then I'm going to click here and it changes it to an M. That means it's going to um, snap manually. And the way you can see the difference is that you can now snap the center of the block to one or more pivots of the other blocks. So if I wanted a block snapped right here, say, I could do that, or I could even move it further out and snap it to one of the other sides of my block so that it hangs out over the edge or like so. So I could do that. So I can now pivot between the blocks. Let's change this back, hitting the plus sign, change the grid back to full sized. And then you can see that it, it is now, you are now able to place the block between two blocks instead of just, uh, just where it wanted to go in the first place, which is always to the center of the block. Now, before we build anything, let's talk about this radial menu. Um, you hold down the letter C on your keyboard to reveal this menu. And let's go through each one of these. The scale preci precision, that tells you uh, what, what increment you're going to make your blocks bigger or smaller in. So two would be two block sizes at a time. And let's see what that looks like. So if I hit shift and the right arrow, that makes it two blocks. In this case, I'm, 
facing the wrong direction, but that's making it two blocks uh, at a time bigger or two times bigger. Um, so if I go back, so there's one block. So this is a two times multiplier, right? So actually, that's interesting. Actually, it's making it three blocks instead of two blocks because it's adding a block on either side. So it's a two times multiplier, but not behaving exactly the way I would expect it to. <laughs> Um, so what I'm hitting, um, I'm hitting the right arrow or the left arrow and the up arrow or the down arrow or the page up arrow or the page down arrow. Now to add to your confusion about how that works, let's hit the C button again and let's change it to say 0.5. That's one. So that would be one block at a time. 0.5 would be half a block at a time. Let's try that and I'll hit those same keys so you can see it's just getting a half a block bigger at a time. And same thing with up and down. Okay, so that's the increments or the, um, the precision, what is it they call it? scale precision. So that's how how the multiplier at which you are making it bigger or smaller. I tend to do a lot of fiddling in this area because it's a tiny amount. So when I get down to the the detailing, we we use that a lot. Okay. So the second thing is rotation precision and this is measuring the degrees at which it rotates. So there's 90, 45, 15, 10. Um, the old version of the game, the Java version, just had 15, I believe. Um, but now we have we have really fine tuning on this. So let's let's choose 45 because you can't see 90 on a square. Let's choose 45 and see what that looks like. So I'm not holding anything down now and I'm just rotating it. Forty-five degrees. And it's staying in position because it's using the pivot right now, so I don't have to hold on to it. Okay, so back to this. Let's change this to uh, 15, which is a pretty good basic rotation amount. And you can do multiples of those. Um, we will go back and, and cover these again and again. The next thing is rotation mode. Now there are three modes. There's the default mode, which is what you're used to. And depending on which way you are facing, um, Movement and rotation can kind of act differently when you're in the, in the default mode. It also has rotation mode world. Now that's based on the rotation or the grid of the world. It's, it's kind of hard for me to demonstrate what these do. They're slightly different. But if you notice, it, it's not behaving the same way as it was before. So it's always sticking to, even though I am rotating it in different, um, in different ways, if you notice now, you would think when you push the left and right arrow that it would rotate left and right, but in the world mode, it's going to still rotate on the world axis. So this way and this way along the grid axis. always on the grid axis, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so then the other way is local. Now that means that it's rotating from the center of the piece itself. So if I rotate the, and I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna see if this works with snapping on. I don't know if it, if it will, because that can affect it also. So if I rotate this, this way and this way, that's fine, but let's rotate it this way. Now, when I go with the rotation, it should rotate on the pieces axis. And it does. So is that making sense? You see, it's not rotating with the grid now. It's rotating with the piece. I think this is, this is probably, to me, the hardest thing to grasp. It is the most dif difficult concept, um, the movement and the rotation modes. They're, they behave so differently depending on what you have Select it. Now this is the move mode and similar to the rotation mode, the world or default mode will always, um, will always move according to the grid. The local mo mode will move according to how the place is, how the piece is placed. So if I've rotated the piece, then it, it is going to move along its own rotation. L let me demonstrate that. So move, and there are, are there only two modes on, on move. So it's, it's move mode, world is the default, and local is the optional mode. So let's, let's do this first. So now I'm going to use the, and if you notice, I've got my, uh, if you look down in the lower left corner there, you'll see that I've got some weird numbers. Uh, I did not rotate this all the way back to its normal rotation. So I'm gonna hit backspace, which brings everything back to zero. Now, if I hit the um, keys to just move it, whoops, that's the rotation. So if I hit shift and then, oh no, that makes it bigger. Um, control, no, that rotates. Oh, I know why it's not working, okay. Um, to move it, you'll see that it's, it's not allowing me to move on its own. It's only moving on a 90 degree, basically, when I move the block. All right, so it's only moving with the grid. It won't move on a diagonal. But if I take this same block, let me uh, get rid of this one. Okay. So if I take the block and I rotate the block, let's just rotate it. That's a 30 degree, so that's an odd rotation. Now you can see, well, let me turn off snapping so you can see it more easily. I hit enter to turn off snapping. Now you can see that it's allowing me to move more or less along its own path. But if I turn off the grid, you'll see it can, it can move smoothly along its own axis. So I can go this way, I can go this way. Whereas if I have the grid on, it's, it's going to move along that axis, but only in relation to the grid. But it's not stuck moving this direction and this direction. It can move on its own axis because it's rotated. So if I turn that grid off again, you can see that it, it will move smoothly in the direction that I selected. And I'm almost out of time for this lesson, but um, let me see if I can get a little bit further along here with our, uh, so this is the world direction. Oh, let's, let's go with local and see what we do. And let's turn the grid back on. It still behaves the same way. I think primarily this, um, this is used uh, with um, the manual movement. Let me um, 
let me put this back in its own default position. And I'm not going to go through this manual positioning, but if you hold, if you hit the right control button, um, you'll see that green thing down at the bottom there that said manual positioning enabled. That will allow you to basically let go of the block and then you can move it however you want. Now, if I have, if I'm going to Wrote, uh, I'm going to disable that and I'm going to rotate the block a little bit and then I'm going to hit control again to enable manual positioning and now it should move yeah it moves on its own axis but I don't have to hold on to the block regardless of the grid but now here's where it gets interesting if I hit enter to enable snapping it's going to be, it's going to do weird things. It's still going to be able to move on its own axis, but it's still, but it's adhering to the grid now. If you notice, it's, it's hitting a particular spot on the grid. So that doesn't always get us what we want. Anyway, that, that is uh, the, the first oh, quarter of this circle of things. Um, but there is more, <laughs> but I think that's enough for, uh, for this particular lesson. Um, we didn't get our wall built, but we will, we're going to build a wall with, with the traditional block method. So you can see how that works. And then we're going to move on and move and, uh, build, a, um, a couple of different methods. Uh, and I'm going to continue along with this C, uh, radial menu, because this has a bunch of different um, things in it. I still haven't quite figured out why these three are painted orange. I, I, I ha I'm going to have to ask that question because I don't know. And then these two are painted blue. But these, um, there are more things here than there used to be when he first, uh, when the developer first uh, gave us this radio menu. It's, it's gotten more and more full with different methods. Uh, I almost think it's too complicated, um, but it certainly does open up uh, many, many, many new building possibilities. So next time we'll go through the rest of the stuff on that menu, and then we'll actually put it into uh, put it into use, and and I can show you how it works and why it does what it does. Okay, bye. See you next time.